Hi and welcome to this introduction video to the Kelowna in Unreal Engine 4. So those of you familiar with Cinema 4D, this tool will be very familiar to you and how it works. So inside Unreal, inside the Actors panel, I'm going to search for Kelowna. And there we have it and I can drag it into my scene. So the Kelowna does what its name basically says and that it clones objects. And we need to tell it, the way that we do this is we need to tell it which object to clone and we do that by setting the child of the cloner as this mesh or the actor that we want to clone. So let's go ahead here and find something in our content library. Um, yeah, let's take the, the cube. Let's start with that. So I'm going to drag that into my scene. And okay, so now I said we have to move it as a child of the cloner. But when I do that, I get this error that I cannot attach static actor to the dynamic actor clone. The reason that's happening is because we need to set our mobility to movable. So I'm going to set movable and now I can move it as a child no, with no problems. Okay, so we can now go back to our cloner and let's set the location zero. I just like working from the zero point. Okay, and now we can start cloning it. So with the cloner actor selected, we have a few properties here. So right now the grid in the rows is set to three and three. Okay, but we only have one cube here and that's because the count is set to one. So it's only cloning one object. So three by three, that's a grid of nine. If I increase this to nine, we now get a grid that's three by three with nine elements. If I was to give it with eight, it would only render the eight objects inside my grid. If I was to give it more, it would still only render nine because the space that it has is three by three grid, okay? The grid can also be a three-dimensional grid. So right now we just have rows and columns. We can also set the grid depth to three. So that would require us to have 27 elements. So I'm gonna increase this to 27 and I'm gonna set the grid depth to three as well. And now you can see that we get this three by three by three grid uh, object. So that's already very cool. We can do a lot with this to create different objects in our games uh, or in our levels very easily. Okay, so uh, the few things that we can do, they're spaced out pretty far away. So if we bring this down by half, so I'm going to set it to 100. Okay, now that's a bit too much because now there's no spacing between them. So let's set 150 on each. Okay, now we get this this cube, this very cool looking cube over here. Okay, great. So right now what I've shown you so far is that we've set the shape here to grid. That means it's cloning the elements into this grid shape. What we can do, we have a few other properties and let's talk, just go through the list. We have the circle, the linear and the mesh. So if we set it to a circle, it now renders our clones in a circle. And what we can do is we don't need the grid properties anymore. We need to open up the circle properties, the radius. All right. So that's the the size of the circle that's going to render. We can increase uh, and decrease this as we want. So I'm just going to set it to 250. We have quite a few elements in here. We have 27. So I'm going to bring this down to about 10. Okay. So now we have these cubes and we can play with the angles of the cube. So if we do something like that, it's going to render our objects, our cloned objects along this circle that has an angle of 140 now, and now it's 360. And we can also do it from the other way. We can move where the starting point is. So if we set this, for example, to 90, not much happens, but it's moved the, the starting point. If I set this to 90 as well, so we have the semicircle, and I play with the start angle. So it starts off at zero. That means right this point over here, that's where it's going to start rendering our objects. And we can move that. So if we set it to 45, it's going to start over there uh, and you get the point. So let's reset these. And I'm going to set the total radius to 360. Oh, sorry, that was the, I want that. I wanted the circle angle. Let's change this to 360. And we can change the direction, the orientation that our circle is rendered, something like that. 
The other very cool thing is, so you now you see that these sh each of our cloned objects has a slight rotation to match the circle. We can turn this off by hitting the create uh, circle align. So now the cubes are rendered in our circle, but then their self orientation isn't changed to match the circle. So I'm just going to hide this for a second, and I'm going to bring in. Oh, I'm just going to bring in a, another. Uh, object. So I'm just going to move this out of the way. Let's go to our props and let's bring in a chair because this is a much easier example. I'm going to add another cloner. I'm going to add my chair. Remember, I have to set it to movable and now move it underneath. Okay. I'm going to set this to the circle. And I want to have, let's say, 10 objects, something like that. Okay. Again, our chairs are facing outwards. If we want to change this, we go to the rotation over here and I'm going to change this rotation to 180. Okay, so now they're facing inwards. Again, that's something very cool that gives you a lot of flexibility here. And now we can see clear more what I was talking about. If I go to here and I say a line, uh, circle a line, the chairs, I, I can arrange them, but facing forward, for example. So they're not changing their self-rotation to look inwards on the circle. This allows us to create some really cool setups. Okay, I'm gonna leave that on circle a line. I want everyone to be facing inwards. Um, and say I want a semicircle of chairs, for example, I can easily achieve that. Set the circle uh, angle to 180 degrees, all right? So that's a semicircle. I can change the uh, start angle. I think I'm going to need, uh, let's set this to three, no, it's too much. Uh, 180, maybe 270. Okay, there we go. We have these chairs. Maybe I have a few much are too, too uh, close to each other. So I can either increase the radius like so, oh, let's move it, it's getting cut off by that there. Or I can bring down the scale of each of the chairs, so let's bring back the, uh, this to say 200, okay, and I can bring I can bring down the size of each of the cloned objects, so let's set it 0 0.5, okay. Now I have that a bit more space between them, okay. So that is the uh, circle shape very handy to allow us to create these sort of arrangements that we want. Uh, and I'm gonna now move on to the next one, which is linear. For linear, I'm gonna go back to my cubes. I can show you how it works on the chairs. It just doesn't make much sense. Let's set the shape to linear. We now have a stack of chairs, okay? And let's go to the actor and just show how this works with the cubes. Set that to linear. That's pretty cool there. So now we, ha we can play with a few cool things here. So I'm going to start with the linear amount, all right? So I can bring it down, all right? The maximum is 100. So I can change the, the overall height or, or the amount of the effect here. And the linear offset, it's basically starting here at the pivot point at zero. And I can offset that, oh, went a bit too much. I'm going to use the keyboard here. So if I set it to five or two, three, you see that the offset where it starts is uh, is changing there. Now, these linear location, uh, rotation and scale properties are very cool, and this is really where the power comes in. I can change, for example, the linear location, I can create an offset. So I'm gonna set this offset to say something like 20, no, a bit more, I think even 50 will do. I can create this sort of stair sort of shape, and we can combine this with other properties as well. So if I change the Y position location here as well, so to 50, now has this slanted offset. Let's just move the camera here so we can see that a little clearer. Okay, and we can do this. Obviously the same uh, for the Z. Let's bring this up to 200. And that's just gonna space out between each of the uh, cubes here slightly more. So I'm gonna bring that down to 100. Same with rotation. So let's set this to, uh, let's start with 40. I'm gonna try use the mouse here to see it's creating an offset for each cube, and then we get these really funky shapes. And we can twist it like that, and also on that, and scaling it as well. All right, so we can get, if we just look back here, so you can see that the, each cube is getting an additional scale here. So we can even create this sort of pyramid value shape over here. So this can be very cool for like creating different uh, environments or sets. Uh, even in architecture, it really gives you a lot of flexibility. If we go back to our chairs for a second here, 
um, we could even create a sort of like um, stadium kind of look so let's try and go ahead and do that I'm gonna set the linear offset a bit here and let's bring this up to about 20 I guess no maybe 30 I think I need less chair so I'm gonna start with five okay and uh, let's bring this linear okay, let's bring it uh, 100 something like that I can now move the whole thing a bit forward towards us and now we get this offset of chairs uh, and if I bring down the linear location to zero, they're now uh, hooked up behind each other. And this is actually really fun. What we can do here is we can have sort of like a, a roller coaster kind of effect. So if I play with the rotation here, uh, you know, the Z rotation. Oh, there we go. You see, you can animate these values and get pretty, pretty cool results. And you can change the chairs themselves, get the sort of random effect. Oh, scaling doesn't look that well. It doesn't work that well on chairs. I think we guess we want them to be the same. And you can move them closer or further apart. Uh, all right, so I think that covers most of the linear effect here. Let's go ahead and try something else. Uh, I'm going to try the, okay. So the mesh effect is really cool. Let's just go um, back to our cubes over here. Let's zoom out. Okay, I've created quite a mess here. I'm gonna go ahead and select the mesh. Okay, now the mesh is pretty, it's something special. So I have my cube over here, and what the mesh allows me to do is clone it along a, a different shape. So actually what I want to do is I want to go to my shapes and I'm going to select, I want to use the cone as my child. Okay, so I'm going to move that again, I have to set it to movable, move that into the actor and I'm going to get rid of my chair. Um, you know what? Sorry, I want to move it into this actor. So let me grab my shape again and I'm going to move it into the actor 11. Oop, didn't set the movable. Okay, and I can get rid of the cube. Okay, so now I'm working with a cone. That's the, the shape that I'm gonna be cloning or creating multiple instances of. And I have my cloner set to mesh. So if we open up the mesh section over here, it gives us a mesh source. So I'm gonna select the shape that I will want to clone it along. And for this example, I'm gonna use a sphere. So I'm gonna add the sphere to the mesh source. Okay, now what we have here is a bit of a mess, but sh shortly you'll see what this allows us to do. So I'm gonna start by going into the scale of our cloned objects here. I'm gonna scale them down to about 0 0.5. Yeah, I think that'll work. And now what I need to do is I need to set the account amount here to something really high. So I'm gonna set it to about 1,000. And what it's done is it's created all these shapes along the vertices of my mesh source. Okay, so for each vertice, it's adding another one of these cones all along them. Okay, and we can set an offset here. So if I set an offset, let's say of 100, right, it's, let's keep going and a bit more. All right, now you'll be able to see what's happening. So you can see that all these cones are in the shape of my mesh so source, which was this sphere. Okay, so they're all aligned. If I rotate my camera around, you can see that they, we have this spiky cone effect, all right, which is really cool. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and delete just the, the chairs here because I don't really need them. And I'll just delete my original chair. And we're just going to focus on this right now. Okay, so with the mesh uh, option in our cloner and setting the source, you can really create these cool functions along it. And we can go ahead and rotate, for example, the uh, our mesh objects and stuff like that. Um, but I'll let you play with it and see what you think. Uh, and we're going to carry on from this in our next video, which will be the effect. And you'll be able to see how we can manipulate uh, these shapes very easily. So that's it for, for now. Thanks for watching.